So what is strategy pattern? Basically allow us to define a family of algorithms. And when I say family of algorithms, we're basically talking about algorithms that use the same interface. And the interface have a bunch of functions that these algorithms supports. And we can use this image to summarize everything here. So we took this image from this link and you can see that we have these bunch of golf sticks. And these golf sticks represents algorithms, which came from the same family because you can see here, they came from the same golf bag, but each algorithm have different behavior, have different functionality. Now you can see here, we put each of them into a separate class. And you can see that these square-like objects are kind of like separate classes. So what we do is that we supply these algorithms two different classes. And since we know that these algorithms all came from the same interface, then in this case, we can be able to make these algorithms to be more compatible with these classes. So to understand the strategy pattern, let me show you an example in code. Now here you can see we have a class called image storage and inside of the class we have a compressor which is an enum you can see this enum supports a few options a jpeg and png we also have our constructor you can see assign the compressor to the local compressor and then here you can see we have our store function which basically takes the file name and then we based on the compressor that we have we basically can be able to execute some algorithms for example you can see if the compressor is jpeg then we're going to do something here if it's png we're going to do something here if it's something else, we're going to do other things. And then we're going to store the file in the image storage. Now there's a problem with this current approach, as you can see, because one is that we violate the single responsibility principle, because that you can see here, this class not only have to be responsible for image storage, but also have to test these code right here to make sure that the compressor.jpg is doing its job and compressor.png is also doing its job, right? So in this case, you can see this class has more than one responsibilities. And and the other problem with this is that it's also hard to maintain. Let's say in the future, if I want to add, for example, filter, or if I want to add additional option, then I also have to add another case here. In this case, I also have to, for example, add another filter, or maybe having a new enum called filter. In this case, you can see that this code is really, really hard to maintain. Now the solution to refactor the code is basically creating a interface. Here you can see we're using compressor interface and inside of the interface, we have a compressed function. And what we can do is that we can basically have separate different compressor class. For example, JPEG compressor, which implements this interface, which is going to have this compressed function. And we also have different PNG compressor, which also has the compressed function. It implements the compressor interface. And then what we can do here is that for the image storage class, we can be able to make it more single responsibility so that you can see here we trying to store image and we leave the responsibility for compress to the other compressor class which implements the compressor interface and we can know that because this compressor implements this interface where it has a type of interface and we can also do the same for filter as well now for filter, you can see this is what it looks like. So we have our filter interface, which has apply function, and we have other classes, for example, black and white, high contracts, which implements the same interface so that we ensure that if we want to also filter the image before we store it, we can call the apply function because all the filter class has or implements the filter interface. Now to implement our solution, this will looks like. So you can see here, we have our interface called iCompressor, which has only compress function. And we also have other class, for example, JPEG compressor or PNG compressor, which implements this iCompressor interface. And we also implement the compress function inside of these feature class. And you can see here for the image storage class for the store function, we have a new parameter called iCompressor. So in this case, if I want to store an image that's JPEG, I basically create an instance instance of the JPEG compressor and I call the store function, pass in the file name, pass in the instance of JPEG compressor, and then this will compress the file and store the file in the image storage, right? Or if I want to store a PNG file, in this case, what I can do is I can pass in the file name and I create an instance of the PNG compressor, compress the image, and then be able to store the image in the image storage. And I don't have to change anything inside of the image storage class. So now you may be wondering, what's the difference between strategy pattern versus state pattern? Now here you can see, if you don't know what state pattern is, I have a video in my channel, which talk about what is state pattern. Now for strategy pattern and state pattern, basically they're all trying to change the behavior without changing the current context. And here you can see for strategy pattern, we can be able to change the behavior for the image storage. We can be able to change the compressor, for example, change it to JPEG compressor or PNG compressor. For filter, we can be able to change it to black and white filter or high contrast filter. And without changing anything inside of this class before we store the image in the image storage. Now for the state pattern, it's also very similar. You can see 
see we're changing the current tool to something, for example, selection tool or brush tool, for example, this one right here, which all implements the tool interface and which supports the mouse down and mouse up functionality.